Okay, so in this video, we'll make a dependent drop down list. Let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to go ahead and name this tab lists. Okay, that took longer than I thought it would. There we are. So I'm going to make a new tab. I'm going to call this main. So in this main tab, what I want to do, I want to have two drop downs like this. And the first drop down, it's going to be the make. So I want to be able to choose between different makes of cars. So between Toyota, BMW, you know, or whatever else is in here and <clears throat> have a drop down for that. So once I choose, let's say Toyota, I want to be able to choose the model in the next drop down list. But once I select Toyota in model drop down, I should only have Toyota models. But if I select BMW, I should only have BMW models and so on. And that's going to be what we'll be making in this video. Now, a couple of concepts we have to understand to be able to do this. Uh, I'm going to cover first and then get back to actually doing the drop down. So the first thing we'll have to do, we'll have to understand what's a named range and how we can actually use that. So let's say I have some numbers here. So if I try to sum up these numbers, I'll do equal sum and then I'll sum up these numbers right here and I'm going to get my total 126, right? Now, another way to do the same thing, I could just name this range. So I'll highlight the range I'm planning to use and I'm going to right click. And then in my list of options, I have define named range. So I'm going to click there and I'm going to name this range. So let's say I named this cat, right? So I'm going to name this cat, hit done. And these are some other ranges that are named. Apparently there's an error in them, but doesn't matter if you don't like them, you could delete those. That's what I'm going to do. So there it is. I named that range cat. And what I can do right now, I can go back and do equal sum. And then instead of highlighting that range from B3 through B7, just simply say cat, just like that. I'm going to get the same 126 and that's what we call a named range. So we can uh, take a range in Excel and give it a name and then use that name across our uh, file. But so if I have a different tab, I could still use equal sum and cat and that's still going to work. So you don't have to refer to the tab name then range. You just type the name of the range and it will just refer to that range. So that's the concept of named ranges. And sometimes it's easier to just name something and refer to it rather than select. And in some certain cases, it's more beneficial than others. But that's pretty much it. That's one thing we need to know about named ranges. The second thing we need to know to be able to make this drop downs is a function called indirect. So let me show you how that function works and what it does. I'm going to delete this because this doesn't exist anymore. So there we are. So now let's talk about indirect function. I'm going to go ahead and type some, well, let's just start with something hopefully easy. So I'm going to type 12 in B4 cell, and then I'm going to go here and type B4. All right, so 12 here before here. So let's actually just put this in some random cell. So it's not in the same row, not in the same column. So this says 12, this says before, and in before cell, we actually have 12. So what I can do, I can use a function indirect. And then I can have the reference as a string. So I'm going to basically point this to a cell that has before in it. And if I close that parentheses, see, I'm referring to the cell that has before in it. And I'm saying indirect before. If I hit enter, 
that says 12 because indirect I take the before cell and as a result the before reference works and that's 12 and we get 12 as a result now indirect can also work with ranges so if I have multiple numbers here and I say from B3 to B6 something like that so you can see that my indirect automatically just looked at that range and did what it's supposed to do because now it's looking at the cell and it says from B3 through B6 which is this entire range of values now if I wanted to just sum them up I could say sum indirect E7 and that should work just fine so that's our 94 total of all of these numbers okay so that's indirect function now uh, similarly to how we did before we can also use indirect function not only with the regular references but with named ranges so what I mean by that I can just highlight this cells and I'm gonna just give this a name so I'm gonna say I'm gonna call that nums done so I named the range called nums now I'm gonna go here and type nums and you can see I'm getting the same result because indirect looks at that nums in the cell and then it looks at it as a cell reference rather than text and that ends up being this named range which has this range so it just works out just fine so that's what we need to be able to do this dynamic drop down that we're going for so I'm gonna delete all the stuff and we'll go back and create the drop down we're looking for so basically this is the list we have the different basically cars and the models so I'm gonna insert a couple of columns here like this so the first thing I want to do is make a drop down list from all the mix of cars that I have and I'm gonna try to do this let's delete this because it doesn't exist anymore and I'm gonna try to do this in a way so it's updatable so if we decide to add more makes and uh, more models it actually works without rewriting the entire thing so uh, let's start with this so I'm gonna go to main another make we have to have a drop down that's gonna give us this this or this so I'm gonna click in the cell data and I'm gonna do data validation and under data validation I'm going to choose this option list from a range right there so here we have to provide the range that we need so I'm gonna click on this little select data range then I'm gonna click to my lists tab and move this on the side a little bit so I'm gonna start here and I could end here but since I want to be able to add more I'm just gonna keep going and add more columns basically to be able to add more makes and it will automatically update so I'm gonna hit OK save so now if I go back to my main I'm gonna look at my drop down you can see that blanks are ignored so I have just the list of three and if you go back and decide to add another make here it will automatically just update so that creates our first drop down and I don't need this now the trick part is to make the model to now if this is Toyota we want the model to be basically one of these so now what I'm gonna do first I'm gonna go back here to this list tab and I'm gonna name this name this ranges of different models uh, with named ranges and I'm gonna name the range with the same name of this on top exactly the same so 
I'm gonna steal if I'm planning to add more. So I'm gonna do like 20, but you could do more. So start from here, right? So I'm gonna right click, do my defined named range, and the name is gonna be Toyota. So the same thing that's here, pretty much. So I'm gonna do done. Good. Now I'm gonna go to the second one. Highlight that. Right click, define named range, and this is BMW. Done. And finally, this one. Here we go. We have all three of them. So I named my ranges with these names so now what i'm going to do i'm going to go here and it's a column that i made on the left and i did this because i was anticipating to possibly add more going to the right and i don't want to move my columns and rows around so that's why i did this layout but again that's not really the you know important part of this whole thing so what i'm going to do i'm going to go equals and the cell indirect. Right? And here I will have to see which one is selected. Is it Toyota, BMW, or Audi? So I'm going to go to the main tab and refer to this cell. And that cell, so let me close this. And that cell, if you remember, has the make selected so right now it says Toyota and because we're using an indirect function it's gonna look at that cell and it says okay so you want the Toyota range which is gonna be this now if we go back and select BMW we go back to the list we can see that the list has changed and now it's picking this one and if we go back and select this one it's gonna just have these instead and going back to Toyota, we have these. So now this is gonna be the range that I'll be using for my data validation. So I'm gonna go here, data and data validation. And here I'm gonna click to select the range, move this to the side, go to this tab and start selecting from here. And again, I'm, I'll do 20, but it could be a different size. So, okay, save. And now if I get back to my list, see if I select BMW, now this should just have BMW models. If I select Toyota, this should have Toyota models. And finally, if we do this, it's just gonna have this. Now the question is, what if it's just blank? So what do we get? We get this reference error, because if it's blank, basically it's looking at that, and it's a blank, it doesn't know what to do, so we're getting this. So uh, I guess the way we'll fix it, we'll say if error, and we'll put the function, I will say just leave it blank, right? Something like that. So if there's an error, it's just gonna leave it blank. So this way, we're not gonna get that reference error here, and we can just go here and select this, and we're gonna get that. We'll select the next, whatever it is, we're gonna get the next one, and we do Toyota now. See that validation didn't pass, it says invalid because M3 is not a Toyota model, so there we are. So that's our data validation with dynamic dropdowns using named ranges and indirect function. And that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.